So it's day 27 with the cat. Last thing you saw was me filming uh, the circuit, the single engine circuit at Longreach. Uh, I've been putting that together on the computer. Um, started off as a rough edit. It's uh, kind of more or less into shape. Uh, it's a bit longer than I expected, which is okay. Uh, probably end up with a bit of ruthless um, cutting out of ver various bits ultimately. So I'm going to show you a bit of that in just a second. Uh, what I've also been doing is uh, I recorded some commentary for, for this s sequence in particular uh, and I've spent today editing that down. Uh, it's in a rough form at the moment, it's still way too long. The commentary is about, I, can't, I don't know, seven minutes long uh, and this sequence at the moment is what, how long is it? It's sort of three and a half minutes um, at the moment so got at least twice as much commentary as I need and and maybe this sequence is too long anyway I'm not, I'm not sure yet depends how it looks so what, what I'm gonna have I'll just show you a bit of this and then um, I'll show you a bit about the audio editing so I've, I've done the commentary and then I'm, I'm gonna have a, a first attempt at putting them together So what we've got here is we've got um, pretty much as I envisaged it. We've got the takeoff, takeoff with the engine failure, shortly after takeoff, a circuit flown on a single engine. You notice, well, you might not notice, you might not see it from here, but I've got a chase plane in there as well. I, I did do some air-to-air -air experiments, and it was quite nice. So I thought I'll try and incorporate that. I've used a chipmunk. Uh, I mainly came back to that because um, I was having a bit of a problem with just the the touchdown. This was a little bit dull. And I had a good angle from the chase plane, which I'll just pull up here. Here it is. You might not see the plane on the runway there, but this is the chipmunk. I'll let it run. It's basically flying past just as the cat ends its uh, landing roll. So we're going to do a low pass over the cat and then uh, just showing some of that airport scenery again. There it is. And that's that's a cut to an interior view from the cat, uh, and that that's too long. This sequence is a bit long at the minute. This will fade out to black probably. It's just uh, at the moment it's just like a, a filler. Gives us a lot of scope on editing, depending on how the commentary fits. So that's I couldn't really use that air to air. Well, actually air to ground technically shot that chase plane shot without having set that up by having at least one couple a couple of other chase plane shots in so the chase plane starts at um, the takeoff it cuts to it just here and uh, it's just it's just taking off straight after the cat and then we go into uh, the rest of it I'll, I'll say a bit more about these edits in a minute and then there's one other chase plane shot which I think I showed before it's this one uh, sort of coming up underneath and overtaking the cat. This sequence has turned out to be longer than I expected which worried me at first but then when I started to do the commentary I realised that all the things I wanted to say in the commentary weren't going to fit and probably still won't fit even at three and a half minutes. But this is going to be a pretty major part of the review actually. Uh, I'm going to mention it's a good opportunity to mention the shortcomings it's the only critical note really that I'm going to have in the review, the shortcomings of the manuals and particularly this idea that you can uh, legitimately fly the simulator on the real world manual because that's very annoying to find that a lot of the things you do, particularly the feathering of the prop, you know the feathering of the prop's a big thing here I've got this in the, uh, oh there's another chase plane shot there actually, I forgot about that there's my, there's my favourite shot that I was telling you about, the um, that sort of wide view of the dirt strip and then the airport uh, oh the airport buildings I've actually I've cut I've cut away from that without realising it we've got this chase shot in where it's, it's quite a nice dynamic shot it's, it's not that clear actually I might cut this out but we're flying straight overhead the cat just after its engines failed um, yeah the feathering so there's me putting power to eye, idle cut off on that engine you don't actually see me press the feather button here. I mean, it does just so quick and such a small action, you can't really discern it. Then prop to fully fine, 
fully a fully course rather and then the engine stops at the moment that engine st stops but it's not in the feathered it's not in the feathered position that prop so that's that's a detail I have to see if I can I'm not sure if I can actually film it stopping in the feathered position it should do but because um, you've got to be inside the cockpit when you press the feather button it's difficult to capture that so we'll, we'll have a go anyway it's a big thing um, to, that you need to feather the engine but it's something that's not simulated and uh, that's a real gripe because you go through all that rigmarole expecting that it's making a difference and it's not at all I mean continuing to do a lot of work on this it's it's not obvious really it, I don't know I hope that's one of the reasons for doing this blog is to try and make it obvious how much work goes into this thing but I mean you know this is kind of rough work for um, some of the commentary and this is uh, you know I usually script it more tightly than this but this is a lot of rough work for that we've got um, actually that's the cub <laughs> back at the cub review uh, what is that that's just my log of my blogs that I've been doing on this um, got some ideas there about what I might do as a table of um, engine parameters you can won't be able to see that all. so the, here right at the bottom here is a table of the um, uh, RPM and manifold pressure settings so that's my bit of my crib sheet really something the again notes on the engine failure procedures there or, or, you know setting up for doing the engine out circuit uh, lots of things so uh, you know a lot of work's gone into this what other bits of this do I like? Um, I kind of like the interior shot where we're just lining up for the... Um, oh, there's my shot of the, the wheels coming down. We start on the interior. Um, the wheels starting to come down. See, so I've cropped the pilots out up there. And we've got the road down there with the moving traffic. So that's a nice sort of juxtaposition. I don't really like that shot. It's too close in. Um, but when we cut to an interior shot, I like this shot from the cockpit showing that dirt strip and we're coming in quite steep but it's fairly realistic tower, tower shot there gives a good sense of speed with those clouds this is a bit fiddly at the moment, we've got too many shots really on this approach uh, it's a nice, this is a very good this is a very good touchdown actually uh, if I may say so myself it's a very slight balloon that shot start, stops being interesting just at the touchdown because it's a little bit too bland you don't really see the round out very well I might change that, here's that air to air shot again you've already seen that so I quite like that, what else do I like, I should say by the way all the sound none of the sounds are done here this sound is just basically as it as it falls uh, ultimately because the m most important sound is the um, the commentary, I'm going to talk about the commentary in a minute and then once the commentary's in, I will tweak all these other sounds so it's consistent, so the levels are acceptable. And in a couple of places we need special effects. So where I'm feathering the prop and things, this is all a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to see what's going on. So I'll put, what I'll probably do is fake some, fake some clicks and squeaks and things in there so you get sounds of the, um, it, the levers and switches and things being thrown. The other major sound effect obviously is here, it's done, yeah, I've got it here in a very sort of coarse fashion, it's where the engine failure happens, so just after the gear comes up, I'll let it play here. So that's supposed to, I mean that is the sound of an engine um, spinning down, it's supposed to connote that there's an engine fail, at the moment it's very um, crude and not not very good, doesn't give a very good impression. It's actually not that obvious that the engine fails here. Um, I'll kind of try to swing swing the view across so it looks like we're slewing to the right and actually I'll, I'll say on the commentary that we're getting a slew to the right. It's actually not that noticeable in practice but it's got to be noticeable on the video so we fake it if necessary. That's just a shot of the feathered prop from inside on oh, the cowl flaps closing actually that's just a that shot's not necessarily going to be there that depends on where I've got three shots here up on the top which are just details so details of close-ups on the gauges these are going to go wherever they need to go 
um, to link in with the commentary. So they're just parked up there at the minute. That shot's spurious, fairly random sort of cut to an interior shot. It's a nice shot, but it um, doesn't really fit there at the minute. I'm not sure what I'll do with that. I'll probably take it out. And that's it. I mean, it's basically just, as I say, take off circuit and land. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to just close this and I'm going to show you the um, commentary. So what you see here, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera. So I don't know how well you can see this. I've tried to zoom in on the central portion a little bit, um, give you an idea of uh, how this looks. So at the moment this, this basically, well you can't see it all now because I've because I've moved the blinking camera in, but um, basically what you see here on the central screen is about half, from here to here is about half the commentary for the circuit. This is the working version, the first edit of the commentary. So this commentary so far is standing at um, five minutes and four, just, well, just under six minutes. This is the commentary for the circuit. So it's roughly twice as long as it needs to be. I mean, why I'm showing you this really is just to show you what kind of micro editing really goes into this um, into the editing the, the commentary you know it sounds like and it's designed obviously to sound like it's casually done and uh, improvised and uh, it sort of is improvised and casually done but at great lengths with lots and lots of outtakes so you can see up here in the top half of the screen and none of this is none of this has got video attached to it this is all just audio editing I'm editing it in Premiere because it's relatively easy to do that. So these are just um, the individual clips that are pulled in off the camcorder. Um, and you can you can pull up one of these in the editor and have a look at it. It's not really that much use to do that. Well, just as we're getting the gear up. So we yeah, get immediate you, uh, slew to the right to, because of that asymmetry with, with the engines. And this is a raw clip unedited. So we get an immediate slew to the right, which we've got to hold out with the uh, rudder, left with left rudder, which we've got to hold out with left rudder. See, I'm having... The most important thing is to maintain speed now. Um, with one engine, we've got... Well, anyway, that's... Uh, the, the raw... I mean, the raw clips are there. I've dropped them onto the timeline here. And then you can see uh, these all these cuts here, um, all these edits that you can see are really to remove pauses, change the timing to remove the ums, the ahs, the swear words, <laughs> a lot of that. And hopefully when you play it... Now these procedures are all taken from an actual cat manual which is included with you can the aircraft. And see that that's... Into a, a bit of a grievance. That sounds pretty um, convincing as a as a spoken director camera, which, but it's absolutely anything but that. I'm going to zoom it out again, so... So what I'm going to do now... I'm not going to spend very long on this. Well, I'm not going to spend very long on filming it. I'm going to drag in those um, bits of commentary and I'm going to basically try them on. Right, circuit commentary. <laughs> so you can see there we've got um, roughly uh, twice as much commentary as we need, which is a bit of a pain. Um, this is where you have to get ruthless and throw things out, but I, but I've got a lot of stuff in there that I'm not that I'm not that wedded to, should we say? But uh, it'd be interesting just to give this a play and see how it looks already. The start is a regular takeoff, props fully forward, increase power to get it rolling, then gradually advance the throttles to maximum power. That'll give us approximately 48 inches on the manifold pressure. Rotate at 87, and then we we'll take so off. So you can take off about 90 knots. see at the moment, obviously the sounds not balanced terribly well. Too much volume on the aircraft sound. Now you see there, it's already up to the point where it's talking about the engine failure. It's talking about the slew to the right. I'll just move that along so we can see how that matches up. As soon as we've got a positive rate of climb, get the gear up. Now the engine fail is going to come in just as we get the gear up. Right, that's where he says I'm saying immediately get a slew to the right. I want that to be about there, I think. Get the gear up. Immediately get a slew to the right because of that asymmetric thrust. And actually that sound effect wants to come a little bit before then. I'll just turn up the sound on the uh, commentary so you can hear that above everything else. Now the engine fail is going to come in just as we get the gear up. Immediately we get a slew to the right because of that asymmetric thrust. Try that one yeah. more time. Now the engine fail is going to come in just as we get the gear up. Immediately we get a slew to the right because of that asymmetric thrust. 
half hour set over the left rudder. Not quite as significant as you might expect, the engines are quite close to the centre line. So the immediate priority is to maintain speed with only one engine with uh, barely got any surface of power. You've got to make a decision about what to do. Now in this situation, just about... Yeah, so I've, what I'll do now is really, I mean, I, I won't show you too much more of this, but um, the idea obviously is I've got to chop this commentary file up a little bit and shuffle, shuffle it around. But it's going to work out pretty well. I'll just have one more go at uh, lining up a bit. Um, I, I want to find the bit where I say setting up for the approach. So, um, Okay, so we're setting up for the approach. Yeah, so if I cut it there, go back to where the approach is... So if I dump it about there. Okay, so we're setting up for the approach on the jet strip. We've got plenty of height here, which is a relief. And we're going to keep the wheels up until we're absolutely certain we're going to make the runway. Oh, you see, there's a faux pas. I've talked about setting up for the approach, keeping the wheels up. And I'm saying that after I've put the wheels down. Now, the problem with this is already... Oh, no, there you go. I've got setting up for the approach. There you go, I can use I can do that. Okay, so we're setting up for the approach on the dirt strip. We've got plenty of height here, which is a relief. And we're going to keep the wheels up until we're absolutely certain we're going to make the runway. Once the wheels are down, we're absolutely committed to land, go around, it's not going to be possible. If we do attempt it, we're probably going to destroy the remaining engine. In most other respects, this is going to be a fairly normal approach. Obviously, we've still got that asymmetry with one engine running, but um, at a low power setting, it's less significant. We're coming down fairly fast, probably a little bit faster than normal in terms of descent rate, simply because we're trying to... So that's pretty good. I mean, that's... Um, I might have to stretch this a little bit. I'll, I'll chop it up. ...so easy to balloon. Runway is comfortably long enough to put it down. Yeah, so you see the commentary kind of runs out there, but if I chop that up a little bit and stretch it... Um, we should be okay. I might I might record a little bit more for that. I'm not I'm not sure. So there you go. That's um, editing in action. That's the very first rough edit of the circuit with commentary. More as it happens. Just a quick update. Coming to you handheld. Um, I've I've had a go uh, editing this together uh, with the set with the uh, commentary. You see the commentary. I zoom in. You see the commentaries. Um, pretty much chopped up the bottom line on that bottom stripe on that um, display there and uh, if you look over to the right hand side one thing that's emerged is I've got far too much to say to fit into that um, three and a bit three and a half minute circuit in particular that chunk right at the right hand side there try and zoom in on it that's sticking out by about uh, an extra minute uh, that's pretty much the meat of what I wanted to say, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, that was basically a monologue about the shortcomings of the manual manuals that supplied with the cat. So, a um, bit of a dilemma now. Um, left with, uh, I mean, there's no way. Unfortunately, that's that's that monologue's kind of two minutes long in total. I can chop it down a bit, but not not enough. I mean, really, it was going to have to fit in kind of in the middle of that. Um, sequence that you can see there so so basically that was going to come as i was flying around the middle part of the circuit i mean there's just no chance of doing that unless i really stretch the circuit and um, put a lot of kind of boring um stuff in the in the middle and uh, that really breaks up the the flow of it so i'm not going to do that what, what i am going to do um if i just quickly show you what's going on at the end there and it's a bit shaky because i'm doing this handheld and trying to juggle things. So that's basically the roll out at the end of the touchdown. Now these procedures are all taken from uh, an actual cat manual. So we cut, I mean that's that's the air to air shot that's going to cut to the um, I'll just turn that sound down. Hang on. So just now it's going to cut to the, so that's the, the view uh, of from the cat cockpit taxiing. So that's a fairly engaging view. I don't, I don't mind prolonging that right up to the end uh, of the taxi. But we're still left with about, I think it's about a minute extra um, on the end of that. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to go back to, um, I'll fly the 
yeah so it's ended there oh no it hasn't nearly ended so what I thought I would do is fly the um, the chase plane um, around a bit and then and then just do the touchdown of the chase plane I mean essentially that's just a bit of noise but something to um, just something to be playing over the um, over that commentary I can get some nice scenic shots of the chase plane I think what I'll do is I'll fly see if I can wind this back so you can see what I'm talking about hang on a minute yeah so if I zoom in on I don't know if you can really see this but um, so the buildings over there that's 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 quite a nice sort of scenic um, panorama shall we say so what I'm going to do is um, if I imagine the chase plane completing its um, well the last thing if you see you see of it here is where it basically flies over the uh, yeah it's flying overhead so if I pick it up there and fly it um, over the buildings turn it left and then basically track up the field that's actually a very nice scenic shot which I've, do, which I've flown in the chipmunk so uh, we'll do that probably I don't know exterior shot and then uh, just hook it round and land on the dirt strip and then taxi up to um, where the cats the cats parked on the dirt there and that, that's the general aviation ramp there so if I taxi in on that um, it'll re that'll reconnect it with the, with the Catalina really so um, I'll have to film the cat as a piece of static scenery parked there and then land and taxi up past it so that's just another one of the dilemmas of doing the edit but I'm quite happy with the edit as it's as it's gone at the minute had to chop an awful lot of stuff out a bit unfortunate I always always end up having to do that anyway I just thought I'd do a quick update on that I'm gonna have a go at doing that extra chipmunk footage now this is the day after I, um, I filmed that uh, and edited that stuff did the last vlog 